performance advanced with tag gaming i wanted to go over some things i'm doing an upgrade with the system so what i did is i have a 970 pro like you see up here on the left and before i had actually a raid of four 850 samsung evos and um i finally decided because of the amount of wiring in the system and the speed and the cost of m.2s plus what my motherboard supports is that i'm going to get rid of the raid i'm just going to do multiple backups so i'll do a backup on um the 970 one terabyte evo there and also that i have external which i have backups on already and uh, not worry about the raid anymore and one of the things what i wanted to cover over is i was looking at a lot of other videos youtubers do and I've done a lot of shopping. I actually purchased a new Maximus Formula 11 board, which I have the 10 right now. And then I have an 8086K and I have an 8700K, which I'm not using. And I purchased the 9900K because I saw the information on the 10900K. It's not really going to be a processor that, I, that I'm concerned about or want. It's not really going to do the gaming performance that I'm seeing on some of the uh, benchmarks coming out versus the 9900k and the 9900ks as far as for fps and gaming which is what i want to do now i've had some 2080 ti's and i've ran down all the different cards and right now i'm running the 2080 super and i'm seeing with the 2080 ti i'm seeing some bottlenecking with an 8086k and i saw some videos and other information where something like 64 gigs would probably help that versus the 32 i have but um it's not significant and I really don't think it would help the bottom neck that much versus the gameplay I've been doing and what I've been seeing especially since I do 1080p gaming and my ultimate goal is to get back to 240 FPS which for a while back when I was playing PUBG wouldn't even support 240 FPS it was locked out at 144 FPS um, so and what else I got I don't know, I got some new wiring, but Corsair, I'll show that in another video versus the old Corsair versus the stock. Um, another power supply, which I've gone through four power supply. I got a coil wine video I'm going to do because um, I decided to go through. They talk about coil wine and power supplies and switching them out it might help and things like that. Well, I went through four power supplies in the same system. Did not do anything for the coil wine. So the next one here is I'm completely gut the system, rebuild the system, and um see if I still got coil wine on this card. If not, I've got another one coming through new egg and um, we'll see if that has it. And um, what I'm seeing right now is on the research and coil wine, which I'll cover in another video is that the manufacturers can produce cards without coil wine. Um, it is something to do with the inductor coils and the types that they're using, which are more prevalent to coil wine. But the reason they're using them because is they can handle, more power anyhow back to what we got here so what I want to show is 970 Pro it's a 512 so the comparison here is that a little bit unfair from the 970 Pro is because for the simple fact is that the larger drives will be a little bit faster and what, we, what we're looking at right here is not so much a direct comparison because of the one's 512, one's a terabyte, but it is a similar comparison in the fact that we're, we're both M.2s and price point. I mean, this 970 Pro, I probably paid over $300 for it back when I got it, um, or close to eh, right at $300. Where now you can get a 970 Pro, one terabyte, for $200. And what I want to show is you take a look right here is that these are both pros not what I'm going to show you on the Evo but you can see the speed difference here it's not too much I mean one terabyte gets a little bit of bump right here and writes and a little bit of a bump right here and the reads but anyhow you know it is what it is but I want to bring that to you guys attention now what we're looking at right here is I have this drive right here 970 Evo Plus Pro, whatever, Plus, not Pro. And then I have the 970 Pro 512, which I've had for a while. And I've done other videos because I've had the 50 and the 60. And then we're going to look at what I've had as far as for my backup in my system, which has been four of these 850 Evos and a RAID 5, 
which takes a lot of wiring and cabling and they're I had like 3M gel tape mounting them on the back of the motherboard tray and it's just a big messy thing if you want to get rid of it and your motherboard supports multiple M.2s like this 10 does and the 11 which is a little better because there's a shield that covers both of them um, with this board there isn't then it's time to switch over and you can do backups on external drives and things like that and, and the speed that these drives are I mean it, the backups they're going to take a lot less time anyways i mean and i don't have the raid right here to show you on the performance but the raid is not it's still a third or more slower than what we're looking at as these m.2s now one thing right here is you can see i plugged one of the evos back in and did a bench on it you can see it's actually six to four times slower than both of these m.2s um, one thing to note is that on the speeds when you bench you, you can see these speeds they go up and down i've seen this right right here before pretty close to the same as that um, this could be drivers and doing things like maybe um, performance options where you can go in and you can optimize the drives which is, is something that it can automatically do itself or you can just do i just do it randomly every now and then it doesn't take that long um, and you can optimize the drives and that might help them last a little longer and speed them up. One of the things though that to take a look at that's kind of what I want to drive across with right now going into 2020, which is just a few days away, and what's out there in the market as far as upgrading. Right now is the time to upgrade with memory and um, drives. I mean, the memory prices are extremely low. I'm looking right now is I got 32 gigs of Triton G Skill RGB um, 3200 memory it cost me probably three four hundred dollars back when I got it I've had it for a while and I just picked up 64 gigs of the th same thing at 3600 megahertz whatever it is and it was under 300 bucks so if you've got a system right now and you're running like 16 you might want to go to 32 one thing to make sure is make sure your system handles it and I want to say most likely most systems are going to handle 32 and 64 especially for the main gaming platform um, probably not more than 64 though um, just look at your your motherboard specs go to the website and just take a look at it one of the things also I want to point out is that when we're taking a look at these drives and trying to do a comparison is that some of the systems and motherboards can only run like one M.2 of PCI at 4X or only 2X. Now this board right here can run them both at 4X. The only difference is you have to go in and you have to tell the BIOS to run at that. And by default when I plug both these drives in and ran them, this drive here was at 4 and the EVO was at 2. So that obviously Evo was at half the speed. So that's kind of an important factor to make sure to check on your system that you're running these at the 4X so you're getting your full speed out of them. Um, one other thing to look at is that um, temperatures these days, I wouldn't worry about it. A lot of the motherboards, like this one here, it only shields one, the new one shields both of them. That keeps them down. I did notice when I transferred all my RAID to the M.2 that this was hitting 60C and it was set above normal so or it wasn't it wasn't liking it but how often am I gonna you know am I gonna be transferring that much data you know from the four drives to this one drive not very often and with normal operation and, and the information I've been doing the drives are both staying pretty good plus the 970 EVO does not have a shield cover in it to cool help cool it down and that's something that we'll have in the next board um, but I'd say overall with temps these days versus the 950s, the 960s to the 970s, you're going to be fine, especially if you stay with the Samsung brand. Next thing here is when we take a look at the comparisons, you can see that one thing you may want to consider is that when you're looking at money, is that you might want to go ahead and go and you need the more space instead of worrying about trying to get a pro, which should be faster and probably more reliable even though I believe I just saw right now that the Samsung Evo Pluses have five year warranty on them so that's I believe the same the same thing as the Pro which I think there were three years before I'm not sure as you can see the speeds right here so 
that's actually doing better, you know. And um, it's probably something to consider to take a look. I mean, if, if you know, especially if you can only run one M.2, you might want to go with the larger one and run it in 4X, you know, and pay only 200 bucks for the terabyte versus paying almost 200 for the 970. I think it's about a little bit less than that like that, but I think a 971 terabyte, you're hitting about 300. And to go into the two terabyte range, it's, it's not even worth considering probably for most people because you're looking at like $500. It's not really a worthwhile jump. I mean, if you're going to need a, a lot of storage, you might as well go into a standard SSD. Yeah, it's going to be slow, but then you're looking at you're looking at a lot of storage, but it's going to be a significant amount cheaper. Um, I don't know. These are just some of the things I want to cover real quick. One of the things I'm going to do here is that probably at the next video is I have these four Samsung 850 Evos. They're 256 gig. I know I play with a lot of people on PUBG and you know, sometimes I ask him what their systems are because dude's like, where I'm in the plane looking around, he's like, he's still loading. You know, it's like, I mean, loading with a hard drive, yeah, that could probably slow him down a little bit. But I think overall, a lot of times these days, um, people loading, if you've got an SSD versus even an M.2, is that if you're still loading, it's probably your overall system performance and your internet it's not a factor of having to change to the M.2 from an SSD. The speed difference is there as far as for load times and gaming. While I'm not covering it, it's because it's insignificant. Um, to a hard drive, yeah, there's a significant difference, but you really shouldn't have a hard drive on your main system. Maybe it's for storage, but I, I wouldn't even recommend the stay even buying a standard hard drive. Um, yeah. So, kind of wanted to show this information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give away four Samsung 850 Evo 256 gig because to tell you the truth, I mean, they cost me about 300 bucks a piece back when I bought them or 250. And um, right now they're probably only worth somewhere around about 30 to 50 dollars a piece. I have the boxes all matched up, matched up with the serial numbers. The drives work perfect. They're like new. Um, there is a little bit of damage on the drives as far as you know the front plate where I had the gel tape mounted to the back of the motherboard tray but they still work and if you're gonna probably get the drive you're probably not gonna be displaying this drive anyways it's not something like it's got a RGB drive so I'm gonna give those four drives away so make sure that you subscribe to the channel um, leave a comment on some information you'd like to see remember I'm trying to do things a little different on this channel versus what I see with the the standard mainstream youtubers and the copycats and all that tour they're just showing something like you know some charts um, some graphs and that's it I mean I can easily I think some of the guys from what I'm seeing on some of their their graphs or charts with their FPS gaming charts and things like that is they're just copying it from somebody else and just putting it with some music on the background because some of their stuff's not even really accurate or it's not showing like there's a bottleneck where there should be a bottleneck with something like an 8700k and a 2080 Ti um, especially 1080p gaming I don't know but I'll see you guys later.